<laughs> and then yeah, I assume I just need uh And once again with a very bad RTMP delay, I think. Alright, we are here. <laughs> um, I've got Ryan Ford with Link's Awakening DX, um, which is the Game Boy Color version of the game, I think is the idea here. Um, like I said before we left, uh, this is kind of a mini um, a mini Zelda block, because right after this we're going to have Link, Link to the Past too. Um, so, without further ado, I'll leave it to Ryan to tell you the rest about it. Alright, hello and welcome everybody. So, as introduced, I'm Ryan Ford. Um, yeah, so I'll be running uh, Legend of Zelda. Link's Awakening DX, 100%, no wrong work, no out of bounds. I know it's a mouthful to say, but... <laughs> Yeah, we've got a long list of uh, categories that are abbreviated in different ways, but I'll talk more about it once we get started. Um, so I'll count down uh, for the timer from uh, three. Uh, three, two, one, go. And yeah, so, okay, I got about 25 minutes of like mostly text smashing, so like, for 25 seconds of mostly text smashing, so I'll talk about it. Also, thanks, game Twister. Um,. Yeah, so, 100% no woob, no wrong work, out of bounds, so, um, basically not allowed to go out of bounds, so you can't go, um, can't transition screens on, um, solid tiles, like, uh, trees and walls and stuff, and then, um, wrong warp is, uh, any, anywhere that would take you to a, take you to a screen that's uh, not the intended location that would take you. So there's like a infamous glitch called the doghouse glitch where you uh, clip into the backside of the doghouse and it uh, brings you to this glitched world and um, you can basically beat the game in like two minutes with that glitch. So uh, that's banned of course as it is a uh, wrong work. Oh! Legend! Dragon! Chat! <laughs> Thank you, thank you. And yeah, so, um, so yeah, there's gonna be some, uh, rupee duplication on the beach here. So, um, these enemies have a 50% chance to drop rupees. I'm getting pretty good luck, actually, right now. And I'm trying to get up to 10 rupees so that I can, uh, buy bombs and also play the trendy game. So, um, whenever the, the, uh, a rupee drops and it touches, uh, Link's body and his, uh, shield or sword on the same frame, then it does, um, uh, he collects it twice, so, um, that's how I was able to, uh, sometimes get two rupees, um, on those. Oh, also, flashing lights warning, so, uh, look away if, uh, you're, like, photosensitive. I kind of gave a pretty, like, last-second warning on that. So, yeah, you can look back, uh... Now, if you caught the warning, like, you know, if it's applicable to you. So, um, double because you and, uh, come back into the shop after stealing something, then you, uh, take a death. So, yeah, the flashing lights there is, uh, can be pretty rough. So, I also, quote-unquote, bought bombs by, um, confirming to buy bombs and then buffering the save quit menu on the next frame. And, um, so once you confirm on that frame, the bombs put into your inventory, and, um, but then I save and quit before it took my rupees, so I was able to buy the bumps and keep the money. Basically. And then I stole the bow because it was uh, 980 rupees and yeah, I'm not gonna have like anywhere near that amount of money like the entire room. So you just steal it last and uh, take another death. And then yeah, played the trendy game to get the um, uh, what's it called? Uh, magic powder, which i um, gonna be using a few times in this category. Um, normally, like, non-hundo categories, you use it, like, once to get access to Dungeon 2, and that's about it. But do need it, uh, for a few things, like, um, getting capacity upgrades for my, uh, bombs, uh, arrows, and, uh, powder. Uh, that counts the, uh, 100 category. And permanent items, like, uh, heart pieces, heart containers, uh, there's, uh, seashells. Oh, whoops. And, uh, and yeah, level 2 sword upgrade, 
tunic color, which uh, y'all can uh, donate for that bid work, by the way. So, so far I heard that uh, blue's in the lead with $60 and red red's behind with 45 I think. So, gonna cut that off when I get to Dollar Dungeon, which will be like ish minutes in the run. A little more than this, but yeah, had some reason. And um, and then, yeah, also need to beat the game, like beat the final boss, collect all the songs, ocarina, every item that you can equip. And yeah, so uh, here's dungeon one. So I did what's called what we call the bamboo because of a runner named uh, Bamboo Shadow. Damage there to use the invincibility frames trolled by the uh, mini mole that was in the way of the chest, but you can grab the grab the key. Uh, also, not opening the save equipment. Um, uh, opening chests because it uh, skips the text, so it saves a small amount of time throughout the run. To do it to do it every time, except for when grabbing groupies from a chest, I think. Okay, yeah. So, um, there's a trigger with the uh, uh, spike trap. Normally, I would try to do the skip, but I'm exactly low enough. I uh, failed it in the worst way. I would, I would die, so I'm not gonna risk. If I two hearts, then I would have tried for it. Whoops. Yeah, so I gotta be careful here to not get hit by uh, this hard this uh, hard head beetle. Could be a bit dangerous. Yeah, so now I got Rock's Feather, which is a uh, probably the most broken item in this category. So I'm gonna be doing a trick called uh, Super Jump, which if you jump uh, at a ledge and uh, away from the ledge, so I shot an arrow to turn around, and face away from the ledge, then you can uh, jump off of the ledge to the wall. Um, if you're clipped into the wall slightly, so like into the corner of the walls to uh, clip myself. Link clipped clip to three since all the wall and stuff. Got Moldorm, who, uh, first boss, but he unironically the hardest boss in the run. That looked very easy right I just want to get behind him, behind him, hit his butt up. Also, not fall into the pit and stuff. <laughs> Thanks for the compliment. Mr. I'll check. Yeah, I've been, um... I think I've been, like, occasionally dropping frames, so... Trying to, uh, lower the bit rate a bit. But I'll sort that in a moment. Yeah, so here, give me um, doing a small amount of the cleanup. Oh, I also forgot because of Link's Awakenings. Um, so in this game, uh, there's some spots where you can take pictures, and it and um, yeah, normally you're intended to like print them a Game Boy player, but um, the photo. Those as well um, counts towards um, so I'll be getting uh, photos. Soon. You actually get one for um, stealing, so filled that. Yeah, there's fees. Uh, so random three hundreds. Um, through the color dungeon to buy. So. So I'm collecting a little bit. I super jump wall to get that heart piece. I have a trick to get that heart piece. Which, um, a bomb trigger is like, if you manage to find a way to get two bombs on screen, on the same screen, then, um, it plays a cutscene, um, uh, which includes, uh, items that are out in the open. You can, uh, grab them as well, like a heart piece. 
Um, when I got the dungeon one key, I did a bomb trigger to turn um, Terran back to normal when he was a Tanuki. Uh, right before I got the dungeon one key. So, it, um... Uh, despite having the magic powder, which is what's intended to turn normal, but... It's also tied to a cutscene, so it, uh, skips that cutscene if you bomb trigger instead, so it's, uh, a bit faster. So yeah, now I got photos active by going to the mouse's house. You have to do it before going here, because, um, you won't go be able to go into his house after you, uh, defeat this boss, or this mini-boss, and go and, um, save the good boy who I'm about to save, uh, Bow Wow. See this uh, dog coming up soon. So yeah, need to do eight damage to kill this guy, uh, King Moblin. So spin slashes do two damage, and regular slashes do one. So able to two cycle them with like five and three or four and four, what have you. Seriously, good, good, the good boy. This uh, bowling ball of a dog. And yeah, here I did what's called um, flock clip to. Um, Link can move to the side when he interacts with an object, and, um, whoops. Interacts with objects that give him text, like, uh, key blocks if you don't have a key, and, uh, rocks if you can't lift them. If you don't have the strength to lift them. And, uh, you can move to the spit, so I'm able to inside the tree and then move myself further by, um, triggering the text and, uh, moving a little. Oh, whoa, nice damage boost. Probably actually like optimal to do that. It wasn't intended, but take this. Oh, in addition, now that I have feather, um, so being di diagonally with the feathers that are lesser than moving with uh, diagonally, like walking diagonally compared to jumping diagonally, is um. Hope I don't get these, numbers, but I think one speed. Was it 16 sub pixels per frame? And um, when he's moving straight, and then his speed is uh, 12 when he's moving diagonally. So, and when you jump with the feather, then uh, he hits uh, 16 again. So though uh, walking diagonally is slower than walking straight. Um, you don't want to be walking like straight up and then straight left versus like walking diagonal when you can. So, but uh, too many to be confusing. <laughs> but yeah, um, so here you need to kill uh, these enemies in a specific order. This is uh, pretty unlucky because oh my god, getting trolled by the uh, Stalfos, which I have to kill last, but it's like. Begging to die, like, coming in my way. <laughs> so yeah, the Pole's voice, the bunny, um, with my current inventory, you can only really kill it with, um, pot. I think bombs, too. I'm not 100% sure, actually. And then, yeah, the keys of the Stalfos, you kill with your sword, but, yeah, the Stalfos is just, like, in my way and just staying in my way. And if you kill him, then the, uh, boss key won't spawn, so, uh... It's a pretty huge time loss to like kill him, uh, kill him first unintentionally. Then yeah, in the 2D section there, I um, uh, so normally you have to be holding a pot over your head to weigh down the platform, but as long as Link is holding something, then you can uh, weigh it down. So I just use my bomb to do it because it's a little faster than to uh, do extra movement to get the pot. So here I'm doing some uh, broken stuff to uh, try and cheese this boss. So I clip myself into the wall. Uh, when you go up and throw to the left, then um, it'll instantly break the pot. Instead of having to do three cycles of waiting for him to throw his uh, fireballs. And then um, I put a bomb uh, where his body appeared, and then uh, after it pushed him down to me, I shot a bomb arrow at the wall. At the wall, and um, was able to kill him before he started teleporting around the room. So. Um, Normally, like in vanilla, that's like one of the longest fights in the game, but you can, uh, kill him, like, you kill him ultra fast, uh, pretty much, by, with those two strats combined. So I grabbed the heart piece of shame, because, uh, normally it's one pixel, or, 
sorry, it saves uh, one frame of movement because it moves you down a pixel. But um, uh, when you grab the heart piece, so it's like usually faster to get it on your way back. But I um, when I on the first way there, I got caught on like the edge of the pit tile, and it kind of stopped me a little. So I actually like wasted some frames. Oh, again, also uh, flashing lights warning. So uh, look away if you're photosensitive. I gotta be better about uh, issuing those warnings a little faster, but yeah, flashing should be gone now. So yeah, there I upgraded my uh, bomb's capacity, so uh, for, I said no to the first option, which he was asking to uh, double your powder, and um, to double your powder capacity, but I don't really need that, and bombs are pretty important because of uh, bomb triggers being absurd in this game. So, um, you double bombs because it also, uh, refills your, your bombs too. So, since I probably had only, like, I wasn't keeping track of how many I had left, but I think I had two. So, yeah, now I have 60 because the max capacity is 30. So, having 60 is, like, enough for the, the rest of the run, pretty much. Assuming no mistakes. And yeah, so up the uh, seashell in the room, I, uh, what did I, oh, I equipped a uh, sword and shovel together and I buffered both, um, items, uh, out of my pause menu and I was able to cut the bush and dig at the same time, which, uh, makes it about 20 frames, because uh, you'd have to slash and then dig and the slash animations, like, 20 frames, I think, for, like, Sword Slash. So, doing both at once, uh, of course, saves time. So, yeah, here's the, uh, Richard picture. You know what? Uh, as the community. Yeah, so, collect another picture. Um, so now I'm gonna be going to the Seashell Mansion, so... Um, so yeah, I need 20 seashells to get, uh, oh, what the heck? <laughs> I got a guardian acorn. I'll, I'll talk about that later. Um, yeah, so seashell mansion. So if you have exactly five seashells and then later exactly 10 seashells, then, uh, you get an egg, um, as a bonus. So spouting because any seashells to get a uh, level two sword. Even though there's uh, 26 seashells in the game, you don't have to get all of them because uh, after you get level two sword, it'll um, the remaining seashells will either disappear entirely or if they're in chests, will become rupees. So we only need uh, 20. So here I'm doing uh, what's this called? Villa skip. Okay, there you go. So I was listening for Link to fall into the pit and uh, canceled him falling into the pit um, by pausing the same frame, and I push down a few pixels. There is a tile um, that, you can, uh, that you position on, so um, so it's not considered out of bounds. So yeah, we're able to go backwards through the villa um, instead of going to Canalit Castle and getting the uh, five um, the five golden uh, golden leaves to be able to open the front side of this entrance. So, yeah, it saves like several minutes by not having to go over there. And yeah, and also killing enemies or trying to let Bow uh, uh, eat enemies a piece of power. Let me uh, pick up the guardian acorn before I enter the uh, seashell, seashell mansion. And um, yeah, so I need, uh, was it 30 kills without a save and quit or without dying? And, um, I'll get a piece of power, which I'll talk more about later, too. So, yeah, there I did what's called Jesus Jumps. So, if you pause on the same frame that you would, uh, drown in the water, since I don't have flippers, then, um... Oh, what? <laughs> then, um... A link can stand up for that one frame, so you can jump or trip uh, on the water. 
with that, I was able to get that seashell without having uh, flippers, pretty much. And uh, when you transition screens, or then you're in the water again, and if you open your save quit menu, you can um, buffer your jump out of the water on that one frame. Yeah, it's also uh, Guardian Acorns drop when you, um, what is it? Uh, 12 kill if you get 12 kills without taking damage, you get a Guardian Acorn. Which I don't want, which also might get in the way of the piece of power here. Because, uh, yeah, thought so. So yeah, piece of power um, increases your movement speed by 25% and uh, doubles your sword damage. And gives like, like a weird knockback effect, which is mostly bad. Bad weather than rather than good but it's weird. Yeah. Um I did what's called Dodongo skip and do it one more time as well. Oh shoot. Okay, yeah, so I tried a trick called uh French press. So you can actually uh turn yourself in the air the air with that sword slash and um you can shield bump off of uh the Stalfos to get pushed up here to get this uh the nightmare key, the boss key. So, I wouldn't have had to bomb that wall, which uh, saves some time, and also, so these enemies here wouldn't have- These enemies, that I just- just respawn, if I- So yeah, the dongos, and gonna flock clip here to, um, get past the key block, cause this dungeon's called Key Cavern, and the gimmick is to get a bunch of keys to, um, unlock that, uh, that kind of, that square, with like four, um, keys with four key blocks but um i was able to get through it with only like two keys was, yeah a combination of the denonglo skip and then uh, clipping through that last key block and um <laughs> and yeah that segment went pretty well aside from uh yeah, missing a uh, French press, which probably lasts like 10 seconds or so, and... Uh, also the Villa skip took a lot of pauses uh, to for Link to fall into the pit, because it's a uh, frame rule based, like when he's gonna fall in the pit, so it's like... Basically random, and it, I forgot how many pauses that took, I think it was like 11 to, for him to fall. So uh, loses 2 seconds per extra pause, because sometimes you can, you can just pause once and have... Link to ideal. So I think rough it's kind of frame play is what it is. So yeah, a lot of times when I've been doing like practice runs and D rust, then usually that segment is where I just often lose like half a minute because of those two things particularly. So it happens. Oh, also the menu. You can like place wherever you want in the menu. So like, like your, your clips. So uh, a lot of the better of uh, that menu route, but um, I made that. I never actually like <laughs> followed it though. So, <laughs> so I haven't uh, grinded this game enough. Yeah, so I save and quit there because um, I traded a stick to um, get the honeycomb. So normally a cutscene would play where uh, Terran, there he gets uh, chased by bees after he hits the the nest. So he um, but um, yeah, because I save and quit like the frame that the cutscene was supposed to play, then um, I skip the cutscene pretty much. Um, normally uh, the cutscene plays. I think it's like two frames after you confirm the trade, so normally you can buffer a save and quit, and then unpause and buffer another save and quit, which uh, sacrifices two seconds, but so makes it consistent. But I actually just timed the frame that time and got the skip frame perfect, so save two seconds. Okay, there you go. I was thinking too much of many. So. I needed to fix it. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, I grabbed even more seashells, and um, this uh, segment, like, in between Dungeon 3 and 4, um, it's generally 
like the mid game. <clears throat> Sorry, mid game cleanup. So we're gonna be getting a bunch of like pictures, heart pieces, and seashells, uh, among other things uh, during mid. Okay, one extra pause there. Because again, need a bad frame confirming that. Well, um, you trade the honeycomb for the pineapple, and um, getting that pineapple is what's gonna make um, Marin Marin spawn in um, this town, um, Mabe Village, where I started off the run. And I'm um, gonna need her to get a bunch of pictures and to learn a song as well. First, going into the Dream Shrine, because uh, <clears throat> there's a chest I need to get that has the uh, ocarina in it. And normally you would uh, fight these mimics that uh, copy whatever input you do. And uh, they do like three hearts of damage if they hit you as well, so they hit hard. And usually you can just use your boots and run through that whole thing, but instead what I did was just uh, super jump over the wall and... Uh, Um, to reach over and get the chest. You actually, if you super jump a little too far left, you can actually get stuck in the wall and soft block them. But, um, I don't know. Personally, it's never happened to me, actually. Dream within a dream. Inception. <laughs> yeah, right? Because he does go into the bed and sleep and dream to get in the dream shrine, right? Dream in a dream. <laughs> That's so true. And yeah, so there I played the fishing game. Uh, so I needed to catch that big fish on the bottom right, because uh, you get a heart piece. And um, even though I created a new heart, um, like heart container from that one, it also skips the text that says that you made a new heart container. So, like a small convenient time save with the routing. So they get a picture with Bow Wow. Um, the cut- the cutscene actually has RNG. Um, Bow Wow can take a varying amount of time to, uh, bump into Link each time, which, uh, triggers the next, uh, text box to come up. So, can I have, like, around a two-second range, I think? Of time- of time saver, time loss. Cutscene RNG. So yeah, now I'm gonna make this detour. So this tree nearby where Dungeon One is. Um, so yeah, there's a seashell there if you uh, bump the tree, but I didn't have the boots at that time. Oops. Yeah, so I didn't have boots, so uh, I couldn't get it but at the beginning of the run when I did that dungeon. We so just get it now. And yeah, making the dash to the beach to go talk to Marin to uh, take her on my hot date. And there's a nut touch. <clears throat> so yeah, some community lore over here. <laughs> so uh, there's a bit of a meme about how uh, supposedly these seagulls in the background is not RNG, but... <laughs> I'm here to tell you that... <laughs> The seagulls moving in the background is random. It doesn't get any play. Alright, so I got a save and quit as I get Marin. So she should be following me around now. And, um. Yeah, there's a few pictures that you can get with her, like, pretty much only at this time. So if I forget to get any of them, then. The run is. Basically invalid. So I got this heart piece. With well. And yeah, you have to not move when you fall into the well, otherwise you won't get that picture. When you land, because uh you can just like move and then like the cutscene won't activate. So you gotta actually make sure you're not like holding the D-pad or I think if you move up to like two pixels it'll still activate, but um any further then it won't. So yeah, this really obscure picture over here at the cliff is where I collected the, the 10th rupee when I was doing the rupee farming at the start of the run. 
But again, yeah, since you need Marin, then... You have to go get that one. Here's another one with the, uh... It's called the Weathercock. And, uh... Marin's dad, Terran, interrupting our date. So, we all get a picture. <clears throat> And yeah, so that's all the pictures with Marin. And um and also now that I got the Ocarina, I'm also gonna learn the song one from her. The Ballad of the Windfish. But got a bit more to do uh, before that. So taking these warps, so any screens of the warp that you've visited before, then you can uh uh use the warps. So yeah, it's one in Animal Village I use. Here, whoops, gonna be trying to uh, bomb trigger here as well. There you go. So, yeah, so it's a cutscene with uh, Marin to sing to uh, wake up this walrus. The Ballad of the Windfish. And, um, yeah, to get it out of the way. And, yeah, it's a little faster to. Uh, bomb trigger to get her to sing because uh, she's right at the edge of the screen so she'll uh, walk off screen sooner at the end of that cutscene as well not so because uh, there would be some text before she sings too without bomb trigger yeah in other categories you can also uh, bomb trigger that cutscene without Marin but there's like a soft lock risk as well so Pretty neat. I think I wasted another bomb by accident. Possibly. No, no, never mind. I lied. Yeah, so bomb triggered for that heart piece. Uh, I think normally you need the hook shot to get that one. So and then yeah, sacrificing uh, two arrows to the uh, soft serve machine of doom over here. It's gonna suck me in. Okay, really though. So there's um. What's that mini-boss? Uh, Len Mola. And yeah, uh, his hurt box is, like, there in the spot where I shot the two arrows. And, um, you can kill him before his, um, before he appears and before his text even happens, if you're, if you come from the bottom of the screen. There. Some at other categories, you enter from the right side, so you can't, uh, avoid, uh, skip, you can't skip the text. Because you can't get to him in time. We're going backwards, so. It's their buddy guy over here. <laughs> nice, baby boy. Nice, nice. Alright, so. You be learning uh, Ballad of the Windfish now, so got about 35 seconds of downtime I think somewhere in that range and yeah yeah so let's talk about yeah so right I'm gonna be dungeon, finishing some cleanup uh, on the way to dungeon 4 and um the Uh, this is gonna be a tough trick that <laughs> might determine whether I go over estimate or not. <laughs> if I, uh... <laughs> I don't know, I've had, like, two marathons where I've, like, failed this trick for, like, upwards of five minutes, so, like... We'll, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> where, I, where I failed it, like, a dozen times or something, but... I don't know. It, it's been fine when I've been doing it lately in runs, so... I didn't jinx myself. <laughs> so yeah, first off, trick here called oh whoops, called um, ah, dang, swag trick here called French bonks or where we uh, bonk to skip over that pit. Um, it's a little faster than lifting that that rock that I bonked off of to um, uh take a different path. Barely by like 0.2 seconds usually, but it's a 
twice than the last time I'm going for it. <laughs> Compared to the easy route. <laughs> Thanks for the parade. Might need it. <laughs> so yeah, I went in that in and out of that cave to uh, set up my save point. So when I save quit, then I'll be at that uh, cave entrance. It's, uh, uh, whenever you change uh, sub maps, like entering a uh, entering a house, dungeon, or cave, then um, your save spot gets updated when you save quit. So. It's using that to save warp instead of uh, backtracking all the way over here. Oh! That's accidental for this many. Yeah, it's a swag cave over here. Um, so there's a bunch of swag strats you can do, and ideally I'll get... Skip. There you go. Nice. So you can jump around that obstacle. You would get you do, uh, Touch uh, without dash, and um, it's a little slower to charge up your dash and then dash through it because you're right beside it. So you save like a quarter second jumping over it. All right, so updating my save point again for that cave, Rooster Cave. So that's where I'm gonna be trying to go for uh, early Rooster Skip to um, save some time. So I need to clear that rupee off of the screen to get the butt sword. Okay, really though, uh, this cutscene wouldn't play until um, you uh, oh, what am I doing? this cutscene wouldn't play until you uh, cleared everything off the screen, like killing the enemy and uh, uh, collecting the rupee if it drops at 50% chance. Okay, so far looking good. Oh, this is like perfect. All right, nice. I got the early rooster skip first try and also really fast too. Or pretty fast. Um, actually, was could have been like near perfect if uh, I wasn't sure if I uh. The first time I fell into the pit, I thought I was on the bad pixel, but it actually wasn't. So I wasted time with myself. That was still really, really probably like in terms. Whoa, in terms of luck, that's probably like top three early rooster skips I've had. Ever. Just good in runs. I've been f usually I fail it like once or twice, even in it. Like all my D rest buttons. So I have a that's a pretty big sigh of relief. Like I probably I assume I'll like probably likely be like underestimate this run. Maybe by a couple minutes or something. Oh whoops. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm actually getting destroyed. This is funny. Um, normally I try to spin slash to hopefully clear some of the enemies out of the way, depending on RNG, but, uh, I accidentally, uh, my sword wasn't actually charged when I entered the room, so I, like, one, I released it to soon, and also I was pointing my sword up. Strat this, uh, just doing the safe for like one or two seconds slower. And the other one, if I like failed it badly enough, I could accidentally go out of bounds and like maybe crash the game too. So, all right, I meant to clip into that wall so I could dive into the water faster, but um, it's fine, very minor time loss. So I did a spin slash, and then I paused to, um, I opened my menu to skip, uh, the text that he would give. And then, um, yeah, I quit the... Quit bomb and arrows and just shot two downwards to kill him, so. One spin slash plus two bomb arrows to kill. Like, instant kill him, pretty much. 
So yeah, my arrow routing was pretty important to like, uh, to have at least two arrows for that fight. Um, significantly speeds it up. So it's pretty important to try not to like waste arrows by accident or like miss shots throughout the run. And here is uh, what I think is the best song. The cute. <laughs> Mambo's Mambo. <laughs> nice. Shout out to Glenn for the email too. Alright, save and quitting just to not have to backtrack. And, um, you get another kind of obscure heart piece over here. It's like under... <laughs> underwater in the save. Okay, complete another heart container, so that means that um, I didn't miss any heart pieces. For sure. Oh yeah, since your movement's a little slower on grass tiles and water tiles, then uh, sometimes you try to jump over them as well. And here's a ghost friend. So after you complete Dungeon 4, um, if you don't have level 2 bracelet yet, then um... Yeah, this ghost will appear, and um, if you help uh, bring it out, and then bring him to his grave after, and um, while he's following you around, uh, he won't let you enter uh, dungeons as well, so you need to help him in the side quest. Which, uh, normally, you would, uh, in other categories, you usually do dungeon 6 before dungeon 4, so that he won't spawn, but um, after we help him, he, uh, we, you get a... Oh, what? You get a picture? So... Um, it, uh... Just in time for Zoro. So yeah. Uh, trip. Alright, I think Zoro bumps like cold. It's a uh There's people uh, wanting static. There's also other versions of this. Uh, like, if you're comfortable with it, you can do your... There, there are four. But, yeah. Fun, so... What? That's so unlucky. I got a pretty early super jump, I think. Yeah, the ghost text didn't uh, affect that one, but... Okay, cool. Should be good. Yeah, so I had this, like, really early super jump that made me not go as far, so... The second one, uh, I delayed it a little, but... Huh, maybe I shouldn't have buffered it out of the first one. But either way. Got it with the uh, top spawn both times. And yeah, so the the Zora can spawn in three spots, so uh, top, middle, or bottom. Um, generally, middle spawn is the easiest, and then uh, top spawn is like supposed to be the hardest one, but... Um, if you're, like, new to running and you want to learn the buffered methods, then, uh, there isn't really, like, a buffered strat for the top spawn, but for the other two, there's, a uh, very consistent strats that are, like, about 10 to 12 seconds slower than, uh, doing it unbuffered, so it's definitely worth it to learn the, the buffered strats, if anything. But off with personally, too. Since I missed it, then... Broke even with like a buffered shred. So. so they're pretty good. 
Yeah, so here's the house that the ghost wants you to bring him. Oh, yeah, right. Also, I got the mirror after that uh, trade sequence. <laughs> I forgot I did a bunch of stuff. So, like... <laughs> yeah, the mermaid, I traded her her bra for her scale. And, um... I was able to skip her cutscene of her swimming away by, uh... Seven quitting on the same frame that I got it. So, I paused, like, two frames early, so it took, uh, three, three buffers to save and quit. So... Not bad. Uh, was it the, um... The magic lens, which, um... Yeah, so you're able to trade this guy for whatever's on your B button. So I traded away my shovel for the boomerang, and um, this game is like the most, <laughs> it's got probably like the most broken boomerang out of like the whole like Zelda franchise. This thing can uh, one-shot a lot of enemies. Um, it does stun some enemies, but it like one-hit kills a lot of them. It also one hit kills the final phase of the final boss, which, um... If I mess up the faster strat on the final boss, then the backup is to one-shot him. So... Maybe you'll see it, maybe not. And yeah, you can cut bushes... Uh, you can cut bushes with it, you can, um... Yeah, pull stuff to you, which is nice. And, um, if you kill, um, anti-fairies and bomb fairies, then, uh, you'll also, uh, you, you can get a fairy from them, for most of them. Oh, yeah, another lights warning for Mad Batter 2. So, yeah, look away if anything. So, yeah, this time I'm upgrading my arrows capacity. Okay, you can look again, too. If need be. And yeah, and I played Song 2, so Mambo's Mambo will bring you to, uh... This, uh... Lil' Pong... The, uh, uh... Crazy Tracy house. So, so. Uh, conveniently, it's like by the uh the grave the ghost right and then yeah the owl comes in to, to talk as well and yeah so here's the photo coming up Yeah, just text master in as normal. Yeah, so I'm gonna be making my way to the colored dungeon. So I forgot to kill a little more about uh if you wanna choose my tunic color to get your donations in. I'm not sure what the current standings are, but last I heard blue was ahead. Um Yeah, I'm gonna be doing the cutoff after I kill the uh mini boss when I enter this dungeon. So be like a giant uh, buzz blob that I'm gonna spam uh, powder at. I'll just uh, cut it off there. Blue still ahead? Alright, thank you. So yeah, probably come on, like a minute ish. So yeah, I hear you. The uh, fact that you're actually playing on a Game Boy. So guys ask what color are they? Just gotta tell he's blue the red one he's blue. And yeah, so there's this uh rupee cash root that you can um collect a bunch of uh these rupees are all worth five rupees, so as I mentioned earlier I need three hundred rupees to buy song three. So um Oh whoops. <laughs> it's like three mistakes in one. <laughs> Yeah, so those rupees are worth five, and um, if I hard reset the game, then um, there will be another. Uh, th those rupees will be back, so I can um, kind of cheese it to get a 
300 rupees really fast. Yeah, so after I kill this enemy, then, um, yeah, we'll just cut off the bid work. Yeah, I know there's gonna be, like, a bit more time to, uh... A bit more time before I actually choose the color, but... Almost every- whoops. Almost every time in a marathon run, I always forget to, like, mention when to cut it off if I don't, like, do it a little early. So. <laughs> Alright, so I grab the boss key and I save quit and then I hard reset after. So, should, uh, reset the rupees in this room. So I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna grab all of them except for probably the last one. Except for one. There you go. And it's also very easy to forget that you're like short on rupees and then just like <laughs> try to buy the song and then like <laughs> not have enough. It's like a pretty, funny, pretty funny mistake. I've done it once ever, but seen it happen occasionally in like races and stuff. So yeah, here we've got uh, uh called the bingo room, so... Yeah, I guess these guys' movements and their spawn points are, like, random. Oh, I didn't know that that could happen! <laughs> I actually didn't know that you could, uh, throw these guys into the other. <laughs> oh my god, this is a disaster match. <laughs> alright, alright, alright. <laughs> I love how the, uh, top green one, I, like, missed the hole by, like, a pixel too, so it didn't actually go in. That was actually pretty epic. I, I probably lost like at least 15 seconds compared to an average bingo room there. <laughs> and yeah, there's two different strats. You can either use, um, was it sword or, uh, generally sword or boomerang. Uh, boomerang is like faster if you're lucky enough. So. Oh yeah, so the, uh, so what's the, uh, color? I gotta pick. Sorry. Uh, gotta choose right now. Assume it's still blue? Alright, it's blue. Alright, thanks for playing, everybody. Thank you for donating. Yeah, so... I should I should have tried to sell it at the start of the run about uh, the differences between the tunic colors, but... <laughs> I've been rambling so much about what I'm doing in the run that I completely forgot. So, um, yeah, blue is, like, generally more optimal for the run. Um... So it does, it makes you take half damage, and that's literally it, but Red Tunic, um, there's a bunch of things that happen. So it doubles your sword damage, it gives, um, enemies a, the knockback effect. So, like, pretty much everything that Piece of Power gives you, except for, uh, the speed in increase. Like the Piece of Power I had in, uh, Dungeon 3. And, um... Yeah, so... The double sword damage is nice, but then, uh, it, on a lot of enemies, it doesn't stack with, uh, level 2 sword, which I'm gonna be getting soon. And, um... Oh, yeah, so that jump, uh, skip, skip having a hook shot, because normally you need the hook shot to get over there. But yeah, um... It also lets you lift, uh, objects faster, like these rocks. Uh, Red Tunic lets you lift them faster. But, um, it also doesn't stack with, uh, the speed increase from level 2 bracelet, which I'm gonna be getting pretty soon. But yeah, the knockback effect, uh, also gives enemies, uh, more invincibility frames when they get hit. So, um, because of the dungeon 5 boss, um, it's, like, pretty much random whether you'll be able to get a, uh, 2 cycle or a 3 cycle with red tunic. So, you have to kind of play, like, 2 50-50s, basically, to be able to 2 cycle with red tunic. Whereas with Blue Tunic, it's, uh, free. Oh, flashing lights warning yet again. So, look away if anything. And yeah, um... So, there's a lot of, uh, community debate about whether this is the best song or worst song. So, I'm on, a uh, Team Worst Song. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so generally on average, like, uh, Blue Tunic is considered to be about 10 seconds faster, but if you end up 2-cycling the Dungeon 5 boss, they're about even in terms of, uh, 
time save and time loss with the color. But blue is just more consistent, so. And then, yeah, in tasks, I know red is like a little faster, so pick, pick red for the task. But yeah. Oh, I completely forgot about this uh, <laughs> area. I only re most of the time I only remember when I like land here and warp. See, so, yeah, there's a very out of the way heart piece over here. Um, in front of uh, the moat, in front of uh, Candlelight Castle, which I never visited. If you want to see Candlelight Castle, uh, you'll unfortunately have to watch a glitchless run or randomize it. Yeah, pretty much every other category gets that area. Through either villa skip or just like long warping or being out of bounds or something. Alright, so nice heart piece again. Um, so now I'm going to be getting the final picture over here. So I needed the magic lens to be able to see uh, this guy. Zora? And we've got this uh, ghostly mouse color over here. But yeah, I guess I... <laughs> I won't get to show off the uh, sword strats for... Um... What's his face? Armless Knight. Which you would normally show with Red Tunic. Alright, so here's Armless Maze. So. Oh, I went the wrong way. What am I doing? <laughs> That's a new mistake to me. So yeah, you can bump uh, these Armosses out of the way. Um, any of the ones that are a. Uh, not just a statue, the ones that come alive, like these, you can uh, bump them away with your shield. Oops. You can also bump yourself like into the stairs there, but I uh it's off on my angle. Yeah, so I'm gonna be damage boosting through oh whoops, through some of these armos. So generally you take damage from these Zoles because they uh the slimes because they do uh, half a heart of, of damage. And the armoses uh usually do um two hearts of damage. So I have blue tunics, so I take half damage, so it's one heart. Yeah, so with Blue Tunic, um, since you have so many arrows, it's ideal to just shoot 12 arrows and kill them. Oh, uh, wrong. Oops. Whereas, um, yeah, with Red Tunic, you would use Sword with 6 hits. Or, um, yeah, in other categories where you have Green Tunic and you kind of have a limited amount of arrows, then you'd also do Sword Strats. Like Sword and Boots. Oh, this is bad. <laughs> I didn't touch the armos to make him come alive before taking the hit to use my invincibility frames to run through. It's fine though. And yeah, this area is generally like significantly safer to. Oh, right. right. Should I remember what to equip? Uh, yeah, since you have a lot of health and then also like having the boomerang. Then you can um, also kill any of these bomb fairies to get a fairy to heal most, heal most of your health, if not all of it. So, just damage boosting through that Armos. Get into the stairs. And then, instead of using Hookshot, then you can uh, actually just jump across that gap to get towards Dungeon 6. So, Hookshot's in Dungeon 5, but I haven't gone there yet. Quicker? Oh, right. There you go. Hundo can use a uh, boomerang. Also, you can kill that anti fairy for help in this category, too, with the boomerang. Yeah, normally in like the any percent no wrong warp, no out of bounds category, and no safe quit wrong warp out of bounds. Uh, this dungeon's like pretty dangerous because usually you come in with like. 
On average, you usually have like two, two and a half hearts or maybe like less than that. So it's like somewhat dangerous dungeon. And like non-hundo. And it can be very easy to like take hits in this dungeon too. Uh, I'll try to bomb trigger there to uh, make these uh, tiles activate soon. So just breaking all of them. Um, doesn't really save any time because it doesn't make like the new ones uh, spawn faster or anything. But as long as you uh, the fat the faster you've cleared the last couple is like the only like real time save. And yeah, there just bump that one whiz robe into the bomb that I dropped so you can kill all of them with one bomb. Yeah, so I'm kind of going backwards through this dungeon, and I'm gonna skip a whole bunch of the... Oh yeah, so throwing that pot at the chest to open it is actually what you have to do. And, um, to get the boss key there. And there I did what's called a shack jump, so it's able to oops, get over the wall. Yeah, if you uh, jump beside an interactable object, so like the key block, then um, you can uh, super jump while not clipped into the wall. As long as you're facing away from the wall. And then yeah, did another super jump, uh, kind of tight one. When I like, I missed it once because uh, if you're too high. If your position's too high before you do the super jump, then you can uh, get stuck in that wall and soft lock. And then you soft lock, you have to save quit, and then you know get back there from the start of the dungeon. So it like loses over a minute. So I just didn't want to mess that up. So yeah, here's facade. Um, so yeah, his hurt box is still there before his uh, before he appears and before his text comes up so you can get uh, three free hits before he um, before he can do anything so you turn this fight into a uh, two cycle instead of a five second fight <laughs> yeah it definitely cut off like so much of this uh, dungeon with glitches compared to glitchless Skipping a mini boss entirely. And yeah, there's like so many rooms. There's a lot of rooms in that dungeon, but like, I didn't even go to most of them. So yeah, doing uh, bomb boys over here. Wow. I tried to get the rainbow colored explosion, but uh, threw the bomb too late. And yeah, you can also bomb trigger here to skip uh, this owl's animation of him landing and flying away. Save like two seconds, but I missed it. I guess since I missed like two bomb triggers and the uh, extra wasted bombs I used earlier uh, evens out. Yeah, so now we've got uh, the epic cutscene. So also this uh meet this bar filling is also random in this cutscene. That was pretty fast actually. I think I probably prob that probably saved like four or five seconds compared to my PB. my PB's cutscene RNG. Cause yeah, the, the bar just like stopped for a while and moved really slow the whole time in my PB. So yeah, epic lightning sword. I wanted to try to keep full health uh, to use the sword beam in the next, the start of the next dungeon. But usually it is kind of hard to not get hit there, so it is what it is. Hard and sometimes it's straight up random whether you get hit or not. Yeah, so here's dungeon 5. Um, in every category except this one, this is my favorite dungeon, but... Um, 
Yeah, as as Entroth did said in chat. Yeah, the PB killer. <laughs> yeah, as pretty much this is like mainly the reason that I like stop grinding this category. It's like learning this trick because uh So you wanna set up on a specific pixel and then uh throw your boomerang and uh and jump to the screen transition and you wanna collect the um the key. If you saw when I transitioned, you probably saw the hook shot up here. So, um, if you transition on the screen on the same frame that you uh, collect this item, then you will get the hook shot instead on the other screen. And um, yeah, so it's like I think it's uh, is it frame rule based, depending on whether Link will collect it or not if you execute it correctly. So. Yeah, so it's like 50-50 to like work even if you like do the setup right, so. And as you can see, this is like my fourth attempt. About to be my fourth attempt, so. There you go, fourth try. And yeah, it loses like roughly like 12 to 15 seconds per try, so like. I don't know. Most runs when I have like a chance at PB, it just very often we get like somewhere between like third and seventh try, so it's kind of like tired of grinding this category. Or third and eighth try, usually. The 20 is my, uh... I was comparing against my average splits, and, like... I had a fifth try. Um... Like, whenever I get a fifth try, um... Early hookshot, I, like... Will about break even with my <laughs> split. And I'm like, man, that's so bad. It's either I've had some, like... I must have had either, like, a lot of rough errors that lost a lot of time, or just, like, my average luck is, like, that bad that I, like, <laughs> break even on, like, fifth try, and my average looks pretty funny. Eighth try not too long ago? Oh, no! Shoot. But I get past first try... Out of all the, uh, D-Rust runs I've been doing, I think I had first try twice, and then I've had, uh, nothing less than third try since. But I think my highest has been fifth try, like, during this last, uh, grind session to D-Rust for this event, so... But hey, we made it through. Well, yeah, when I mentioned um, about how uh, there's been a couple of marathon runs where I've like failed early booster skip for like five minutes and gone to overestimate. Like one of the runs, I also went overestimate because I, in addition to losing like five minutes to failing. Uh, early rooster skip I also uh, what's it called I had seventh try early hook shot in that run so that was like I got like a 128 12 or something like that. so yeah oh I equipped yeah there was any percent muscle damage whoops so yeah the um that wall snake there um if he spawns if you have Red Tunic, you need, need him to spawn uh, far away from you on the wall to be able to do a two-cycle, like how I did there. Which I, I actually got, like, the perfect luck that I could have gotten, like, a two-cycle with, uh... I think. Got a two-cycle even with Red Tunic. Hardware setup for this? Um... So I'm using the Game Boy Player, uh, that's plugged into the bottom of my GameCube, and then I'm just streaming through my GameCube. And um, also using a RathNet adapter, uh, GameCube to SNES controller. So I'm playing this on a SNES controller as well. So I recently got the um, uh, the link cable to uh, be able to use my Game Boy Advance SP as a controller, but um, I don't really like to use it though. But I prefer I prefer the SNES controller. I like the GBA SP's uh, D-pad a lot more, but then like 
the buttons and layout is like uncomfortable comparatively and also the d-pad's also pretty small so uh, kind of hurts my thumb using it too much. okay so i gotta remember to bomb trigger here uh, for this uh this heart piece whoa what the did i get an up press like part way through that that was weird Yeah, I just like <laughs> walked into the pit for no reason. Oh, whoops, I forgot to dash there. Game Boy player, but no GameCube. Oh no! Yeah, because you're trying to try running Fire Red. Ooh, nice. Yeah, okay, so. Um, Game Boy player is like not. If you buy it from Japan, like on eBay, it's not that expensive, so I definitely recommend it. The only problem is that the, uh, the boot disc is really expensive, but, um, so to circumvent that, uh, I have a thing called a Game Boy Interface, which is like a memory card. <clears throat> it's like a memory card mod, which I boot through, uh, Smash Bros. Melee name entry. Uh, there's a few other games that can do it, like... If you have a copy of like Wind Waker or something else, yeah, because um, Game Boy Player the hardware naturally has about like three frames of input lag uh, compared to playing on a natural like Game Boy Color or Game Boy Advance. So uh, if you were to use like the actual like regular boot disc in the Game Boy Player, you'd be playing with like pretty bad input delay too. So definitely recommend getting Game Boy Interface because it uh, removes that input input delay. Yeah, it's just, uh, naturally bad hardware, because Nintendo, I guess. It's funny, I couldn't, um, I did a, I streamed a playthrough of, uh, Pokemon Red before I had Game Boy Interface, so I was just using Game Boy Player. And, um, because of the input delay, I couldn't do, uh, the trainer fly, or it took a lot of tries to do it, because of the input lag. Or yeah, the, the trainer fly glitch to uh, get Mew or whatever Pokemon you want. So yeah, here doing uh, bomb triggers to break these pillars because they're tied to a cutscene. And um, yeah, normally there's a, a metal ball that I pass by and you're supposed to pick it up and go through like kind of convoluted puzzles to uh, reach these pillars and throw the ball to break the pillar. But uh, yeah, if you yeah you can just uh, bomb trigger to make this one of the shortest dungeons in the game because of that. Cause, uh, casually, this dungeon is usually like one of the hardest ones for people. So. Like mo most people usually hate this dungeon casually because it's like very complicated. All right, so you're trying a trick called Goomba Surf. So I need. Oh my god, I turned around by accident. And this menu. Um. Okay, I choked a little. So yeah, Goomba Surf. So I needed that uh one Goomba on like the bottom floor, the uh, top section. Or sorry, the bottom section, but on the top part. So were those two Goombas bunched up just now? So I need one of them to move. What? Whatever, man. So yeah, I needed one of them to move to the right. Which, um, I got, I got pretty lucky. I got, like, a slow first try. But then I, uh, choked after. So you need to do a naked super jump here. Oh, the same thing again. Sure. Okay, I guess this might be the last thing that can cause me to go overestimate. If I keep trying it for too long. Because there's a backup to, uh, that consistently loses 12 seconds, but... Uh, you know, you don't have to go through the RNG of this, uh, Goomba Surf. So. Alright, despite losing probably, like, half of a minute there, um, finally got it, at least. So, next thing to quickly mention, so this boss, he... Evil Eagle. So, because I didn't visit any, um, warp tiles since my last segment quit, the, uh, 
The screen under the heads-up display on the bottom uh, is not solid, so you can uh, screen wrap to kill him with a projectile. So, hookshot, sword beam, level 2 sword, arrows, what have you. So yeah, it makes that fight uh, pretty trivial as long as you do that. So yeah, and the, uh, I think the no save quit, wrong warp and out of bounds category can't do that. And I assume glitchless that you can't as well. So normally you just use bombs. But yeah, Goomba Surf definitely is a PB killer sometimes. Like Sometimes it's even just like the luck itself will just kill the run because uh, it takes about three seconds per per try, and it's like a one in four chance to have the top Goomba move to the right. Sometimes you can lose time by it taking long, or then you can just kill, or just uh fail the super jump like I did there. Which, um, I think I was uh pausing too soon relative to not holding down long enough, so that's why I wasn't getting it. So, being too antsy. So yeah, there I did uh, what's called Zoomerang. So, if you have dash speed with your boots and um, you jump and throw the boomerang on the same frame, then you can, uh, you can zoom. <laughs> I tried it in the color dungeon as well, but uh, I failed it, unfortunately. Uh, right before we uh, cut off the uh, donation mid work during that time. Okay, magic rod and glitch. Oh, that makes sense. It's new dungeon 8 first. Actually would make a lot of sense. Just shoot left and right at the bottom of the ladder. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Alright, flashing lights warning again. I almost forgot. Shoot. There you go. So yeah, it should be the final Mad Batter, final flashing lights warning as well. I also grabbed a ton of extra bombs, like, just in case, I guess. I shouldn't need them, but... Uh... Okay, so I think I might not be clipped. Oh, damn. Yeah, okay. So I accidentally bonked bump into that wall. So yeah, if you clip into the wall and you take damage from that flame fountain, you won't, um... Get knocked backwards. So you can, uh, do the flame fountain skip there. Um, oh, I knew I got a bad subject. So Should pause. Oh, okay. Well, that works. So yeah, um, the flame fountain skip. Uh, so normally you're supposed to use level 2 shield to uh, block the, the flames, which I actually have level 2 shield, I just got it in dungeon 7. But then I, uh... But then it's uh, still faster to just do the skip, because uh, Link walks really slow when he's blocking the flames with the shield. So... Even with that mistake, it was probably still like faster to just like... Clip and do the skip. Wait, where am I supposed to be? It's like here. Oh yeah, no problem. Uh, sometimes I forget about flashing lights warnings. So. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, there's the uh, bookshot clip. Um, so yeah, if you shoot your hookshot and jump with your feather on the same same frame, if you have a uh, hookshot equipped on B, particularly, that's why I call it bookshot. And then, um... Yeah, Link will pull himself in. So bookshot, Link will pull himself, or get pulled by the hookshot uh, twice as fast. If you have feather on A and hookshot on B. And uh, there's two specific pixels there where you can like clip through the key block without having a key. So that skips a ton of the dungeon because I just beat uh, Blano and got the uh, magic rod. Not to be mistaken with the fire rod from Link to the Pest. So now I'm doing Lava Swim here, which, um, what's it called? Uh, if you transition on the screen, then you can, um, you can swim into the lava if you, uh, Jesus Jump and transition on the lava. 
If you have flippers. And so, um... Yeah, so, I'm, so I also swung my sword when I was transitioning the screen, because, um... If you're on a bad subpixel, then you'll end up just, uh... Like, drowning in the lava over and over, instead of swimming in it. So, um... Swinging your sword as you transition will, uh, consistently set your subpixels to make you swim. So it avoids, uh, soft lock risk, pretty much. I have many things we could do, <laughs> do as intended. I know, right? But it's just more fun to... ...the glitch. <laughs> yeah, like, uh... To turn, turning a uh, Terran back to a human from a Tanuki at the start, like, you have the powder, but then it's like, the bomb triggers just faster, so, yeah. Alright, Hothead. I actually got the best, uh, RNG, uh, still gonna make it too. Ah! Dang, I choked. I wanted to get the one cycle plus, uh, the tech skip. So if you open your save clip menu on the same frame that you, uh, kill him, it will skip all that text. But, um, so it takes five hits to break his, uh, flame, flame shell. Oh, wait, important trick here. Sometimes you just gotta whip it out for the fans. Okay, anyway. So we call that one Wang Boys. But yeah, um, yeah, the flame shell takes, uh, five hits to break with the magic rod, and then, uh, after it breaks, then it takes two hits to kill him. But, um, he has... Multiple, uh, what's it called? He has, like, mul multiple, like, conditions that make him, like, not take damage when you hit him. So, like, when he's bouncing around the room, if he's on, like, the bottom quadrant, or, like, the right side quadrant of the level, that, of the area, then, like, he'll take, he'll get hit, but he won't take damage, so. That's why it seems like, sometimes it might seem like he's taking, like, a billion hits to kill. But it actually takes five. And then when his uh, shell breaks, uh, he has to start like falling into the lava before he'll a before he'll actually take damage. So I my first shot was too early. You can white screen if you time the safe clip menu wrong. Oh wow, I actually didn't know that. Shoot. I know some like glitchy stuff could happen when he like. If you open the map instead. <laughs> yeah, also here. As Intro pointed out. Um Yeah, like you have actually have the song in Ocarina in this category, but still um <laughs> still just uh bomb trigger because it's faster. And yeah, the reason I bonked myself against the wall on the previous screen was so that I could uh Line myself up to be on the exact pixel before uh, transitioning screen so that I could just uh, equip bombs and then hold up and uh, buffer the bomb drop to uh, drop the bomb without having to manually time it so you can just easily buffer it instead. So yeah, now that I didn't read the- I didn't read the magic lens- or read the uh, book with the magic lens, which uh, normally tells you the path here of where to go. So, it's, uh, if you don't read it, then the path is default to left, left, up, right, right, up, left, up. And then if you read the book, then it's uh, whatever the book says. So there I bomb triggered as I was falling to, um, to uh, skip 12 seconds worth of text and also to make the music not play, because uh, music rolls RNG. So you can... Um, if you stand on this precise pixel, you can, uh, quick kill the, the blob phase of that boss, and then, um... Yeah, this guy as well. The Aghanim phase, you can, um... Also manipulate his RNG. To, uh, so you can consistently get, uh... Energy balls instead of blue balls. So I'm either standing against the wall or trying to stand one pixel away from the wall. Um, 
depending on where he spawns. But I had a... Oh, whoops. I have an app on my phone that I was using to uh, tell me where to stand. So, that's why I was looking at my phone during that uh, Battle of the Windfish cutscene. So normally you can stun lock uh, this guy uh, to kill him uh, a lot faster than that. But uh, I missed the first hit. Alright, so I think I paused four frames early, so... Oh, I guess it was three frames, not four. Oh, Alright, so I failed the, uh, death eye skip. So yeah, here I'm gonna... Wait for him to open his eye, pretty much. <laughs> RNG Manips are zero blue balls. Sorry to the link, link to the past runners. <laughs> so the backup strat of uh, killing death by one hit. I just stood up against the wall just to, I don't know, make, I have so much health and the blue tunic. Oh, uh, time, by the way. <laughs> I forgot to mention. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Dang. Every, every run I got death eye skip, except for the marathon run. <laughs> So yeah, basically I played the Ocarina, um, either song one or three on the same- Try to play it on the same frame that, uh, the bottom right bat was supposed to fly at me, and it'll get stuck in place, and then some, uh, glitchy stuff happens. And you can, like, skip the final phase of the final boss, pretty much. So I don't have a timer, so I have no idea what my time was, but... <laughs> Instead I get to see the power of the boomerang. Um, I think... Using the boomerang loses like 15 seconds or something. Uh, versus getting the actual skip. But anyways, um... Yeah, I think we were like maybe slightly behind schedule before, so... I won't keep ya. So, everybody, if you want to shoot me a follow, I'm, uh, Ryan underscore Ford, 22. Um... Yeah, I speedrun a variety of games and, uh, occasionally play Smash Bros. Melee at a pretty high level <laughs> but yeah um yeah so we got links to the past next so um definitely stay tuned for that and i'll see y'all tomorrow for uh donkey kong country 2 uh 102 percent which will be the second last run of the event for me. thanks so much ryan i appreciate you running um and that was that was really great i kind of want to I need to replay the Switch version of this game. I picked it up once a long time ago and I never finished it, and now I got the itch again, so that's your fault. Um, <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> thanks, everybody. Um, stick around. We, Like Ryan said, we do have uh, Link to the Past coming up next. Chex Human, um, who is one of the best glitched Link to the Past speedrunners I've ever seen in my entire life. He's amazing, and you're, you're really in for a show. So we will be right back with that. Don't go anywhere. All right. See you. <laughs>